allow the new features in my FPGA emulator of Vector of XE on Tang Nano 9K FPGA board. Tang Nano 9K is an entry-level FPGA board which is pretty popular these days. I recommend you check it out. If you are into more advanced stuff, there is also Tang Nano 20K. Uh, which is awesome, but there is no Vector 6 c for it just yet. And for the 9K, there you go, there is one. What you are seeing now is a multicolor effect, uh, which is a very quick flickering between two fields. So it's 50 FPS and my phone can't film that properly. I made multiple attempts of filming it with my other camera, which has uh, 25 and 50 Hz modes, but you cannot really film this flicker anyway. Uh, what I wanted to show with it, and I can't, is that thanks to full control of this LCD panel, I can have proper 50 Hz refresh rate, something which is sometimes very difficult to achieve on modern displays, like in a software emulator, for example. Okay, so let me show a few things that I have recently implemented. One of them would be loading of WAV files, which was one of them. I will show something uh, something probably shorter for this video because uh, loading from tapes, as you remember, sometimes takes quite a long time. So this is a very short demonstration. It also shows every possible color using a raster effect. Uh, you cannot really display this using a bitmap, but you can program the uh, beam uh, as it scans the screen. And uh, we can also try something bigger uh, using a turbo loader. A turbo loader is developed uh, relatively recently and it allows loading from, for example, from a computer or from a file. It works on a real vector of 60 and uh, now it works from a WAV file in this FPGA version. So, it was actually a larger file, but it loaded as quickly, because uh, the speed is like 11,000 pps or something. And this is, by the way, AY emulation on the three-channel timer. So, there is, this is just square waves. And yeah, three channels of square waves, nothing else. Uh, but we are not discussing this. Right. Another thing that I would like to show is a CAS file support. CAS files are using used, used traditionally to save basic uh, programs. So we will use BASIC, which we will load from a ROM file, which is also possible now. I don't remember if I demoed it previously, but uh, we can do it like so. And we just load using code and select a CAS image. Uh, this one is small and uh, pretty visually appealing, so we will try this one. It's a Mandelbrot set calculator, which is it's just an ASCII, so the resolution is low and it runs relatively quickly. So, uh, Vector has two main branches of BASIC for it. Uh, one is this one, which is pretty special. It's different to most other BASICs that I know. And it supports the features of Vector really nicely, which you cannot really see in this program, probably. But I will show a different one later. And another one is called Basic Caravet, uh, which is ported uh, from a different computer of probably 
the same error at least. It's also an 8080-based 8-bit uh, computer, but it wasn't as popular. It was mainly developed for the schools, so it's probably a little bit like BBC Micro or something. And that version of BASIC it has 64 characters per screen, so it uses a high-resolution mode. Uh, and it looks pretty and kind of more professional with 64 characters in line. So I really dig it. But it it's not as good in some regards. Uh, it does not support the graphics and sound. I mean, it supports the graphics and it supports high resolution graphics, which is really good, but not the full color one. Uh, this version was more popular. So, so far, I only support the CAS images for this kind of basic, and the other one will come later. Uh, one of the problems is that there is not really a lot of CAS files for that other version of BASIC, but uh, they, they tried to make it as close to the MSX standard, which was pretty popular back in the day. They tried to make it as close as possible, so in principle that version of BASIC is compatible with MSX BASIC. But in practice, of course, uh, because you do not have color, you do not have sprites, um, you do not have sound, so there is not really a lot uh, that remains, except maybe some kind of productivity, business kind, uh, calculational stuff. So it's still not that interesting, but well, uh, it's cool. Let's load a different program and I will let it begin running and then will be a very long cut because it runs for a very very long time and you will see you probably already see if you can read this it's called trade trace and it's really a ray tracer it's written in basic by guy called Tivagor and it's a small program it's I think it's adopted from BBC Micro or maybe something else but uh, he made a lot of very intricate optimizations that help it run in this version of basic much faster than kind of if you do it naively so yeah it computes a scene and what kind of scene you will see after the many hours cut a spoiler i have already <laughs> computed this picture so i will not have to wait for it now i will just insert it from earlier today and at this point i would like to thank you for watching and stay tuned for next updates and hope you also enjoy fpj stuff so see you soon